And welcome in WVUM 90.5 FM, Coral Gables, Florida, here on this fine Sunday evening finals season for those students. Um, Voice of the University of Miami, I'm Goon Green. Welcome you guys into this program. We are live from the office currently, simulcasting on 90.5 as well as mcr.watch, that's Miami Community Radio. Um, and we're here today to, to discuss community, to discuss a, a specific project and space that that is um, opening officially this weekend, on this Saturday specifically. So I have the, the, the main organizers of, of the event here with me in the studio for those of you guys listening on 90.5 or wvm.org slash listen, and those of you watching on mcr.watch. Um, so yeah, so this Saturday, really incredible event planned. Um, through uh, a sound library concept. So I won't get into the, to the details of it because I'll, I'll leave that for you, Brian. But I have with me here Brian Andrew Medina, um, as well as Victory. Um, what's your last name? <laughs> you can just say Vibraciones. Vibraciones. Yeah. Okay, cool. Vibraciones. I got you. Um, yep, with Victory and Brian here, uh, who are comprising a, a, a new kind of duo uh, performing live and exploring those sounds, but then also collaborating in, in the organizational sense. So I guess maybe, Brian, if you want to start and just kind of, um, you know, wh what was the, what was the impetus for creating the, the sound library? H how did it come about that that became an idea? What is it, you know, for those people that, that don't know? Or, or, you know, since it is a pretty, like, unique concept, and it's something that I had never heard of before. So anyway, yeah, yeah, I, I'll, I'll leave it to you. Thanks, Philip. Um, so the sound library, um, the concepts started kind of floating around maybe about 10 years ago, but nothing came into fruition. Like these ideas of people being able to have instruments that they can, that they cannot afford, but have access to, um, and different, you know, characteristics of, of music that are just inaccessible and, and able to be, you know, basically gatekept through the ability to not afford it, you know, and, um, the whole uh, the whole sound library really started four days before our opening. Um, I happened to walk in to uh, to Vice City, um, and the place was completely empty. We hadn't had our maybe not before our opening, but before our CO. And then and the place had uh, nothing in it. Uh, and my buddy Danny w just said, "Hey, um, come and swing by and come and see my new Kaba bar." And so I go and I s I go by there's nothing happening that afternoon and uh and i go in and i'm like wait a minute there's all these ideas there's all of this this diff all of these different components that i've been thinking of for a long time and all of this could be implemented from you know from the stage from the sound from the the amount of instruments and the amount of gear that that's accessible or that people you know would donate or something you know and um and then more came about to it so the sound library itself is it's a con it's it's our um, kind of our inventory of instruments that's available for the public to use, and um, and of this inventory you can go ahead and um, and select an instrument when you're inside of, of Vice City Cava. So the the venue is called Vice City Cava. The um, the musical component of it is is the sound library and i happen to become a part of both um and this is a process that is going to be happening in phases and right now i mean when we started we started with maybe 10 instruments in, in there and we have grown to where the whole venue is instruments and amplifiers and it's i don't know how it happened that fast but it really it did <laughs> and uh i mean it's we have the the whole idea of it was not just accessibility but to maintain a vibe and make sure that everybody in that vibe is welcome right and so when you walk in we're not it's not just you know the the whole um the whole atmosphere is something that that's inviting to be exactly who you are and we ask nothing different than for people to be themselves I feel like something that's been lacking in music venues specifically is, you know, just being yourself, right? And um, in there, from the moment you walk in, it's like if we were practicing in our living room. And that's the most homey environment because half of us have been practicing for, at this point, like 100 years in our living room, our whole lives. And um, so that's why... 
when you walk in on a regular day, the whole um, Vice City space is it's shaped like a living room. And that was the whole part of the, the creative direction of the space to make people feel as at home as possible. But then the walls, um, the walls are inviting to artists of different kind. So right now, um, Danny, who's one of us, one of the owners, um, he has his art all around and it's it's beautiful artwork um, all around the venue. And the, the walls look like they're melting. The We were lucky enough to have a lighting studio in the space that, that was prior to us. And so they left they left a rack of lights on the side and we said, well, we could use this. And we I remember we did our first clap in the space and it was just reverb everywhere. And we said, okay, we have to panel this. And so the art, the furniture, the the sound panels that we have, and everything that's that's available allows for this environment where, in our phase two of the of the sound library, are beginning the construction of a of a record studio. So, you can this process will be um, will be built um, over the next few weeks, and it's going to be a, a full mixing and mastering studio um, inside of Vice City with Ethernet running towards the stage so you don't only have um, the option to record records um, live with an audience and release live but you can also record studio quality sound because we made sure to soundproof everything and so it operationally it's it's a kava bar and that's how we make our our, our money as of right now but um but the concept is much bigger and it's all about the community and it's all about people people being able to access things that they previously couldn't and putting a space where people will still be using the instruments, still have access to the whole range and in the back, um, taking over a studio, um, a space building out a studio from top to bottom. That'll be part two of this whole journey. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited to be able to provide this to the, to the community. Super cool. Yeah. I have a question. Ms. Vibration is here, by the way. Wonderful discussion we're having right now with Brian Andrew Medina, Goon Green, talking about the Sound Library, Vice City Cobb, and Coral Gables, tuning in WVUM 90.5. Brian, what type of instruments are available at the Sound Library? Um, as of right now, um, we have a, it is a custom Fender Stratocaster. That's one of them, but it's not made from Fender. It's actually made from a Luthier, a custom Telecaster, a, um, a Stingray uh, bass, um, a Thunderbird bass, a, um, a Taylor acoustic guitar, a Martin acoustic guitar, a lap steel, a, um, a Yamaha acoustic. Um, then on the going from the, the string section to the um, synthesizer section, we have two of them here. There's, um, there's the Moog sub fatty, um, which these are all now modern vintage because half of the instruments there are discontinued. Um, so we um the the sub fatty is now a discontinued instrument even though it's still fairly new it's only like maybe 10 years old that it's discontinued so uh, you can't really replicate it um the um Behringer Pro 1 which a uh, Behringer Pro 1 is a model that is similar to the old um Prophet 1 uh back in the day um this is just you know it has very similar audio components but it but it allows for very high quality recording and people bringing their interfaces is really the the cool thing about it, you bring your interface, your computer and plug right in and start recording. And then we also have a TB3, um, which is a discontinued model from Roland. Um, and it's basically the second iteration of the TB303 that is digital. And it's this touchscreen synthesizer. And then um, on top of that, we have a, let me see, a Korg Minilog. And that um, that instrument, that, that that's funny. That's the one that I had a whole history with, but I love that instrument. It's a polyphonic synthesizer. Um, and it is, it can go from one voice to, um, to four, um, depending on the settings, several sequences, um, a key step pro. Um, so that allows you to sequence all the different types of synthesizers. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of different, um, <laughs> I'm just trying to remember everything off the top of my head, but we've had a lot of donations and I, I don't know where to put everything because a lot of it is, I really don't. It was a library before and now it's the entire space. It really turned into a living room. <laughs> yeah. That's cool though. Yeah. I was, I was, so I was curious. So it was like donations from people that, that came and they just, they, they wanted to donate like their instruments. Cause I remember when you were first telling me about the project, um, 
you mentioned that it was it was going to start off initially with more so instruments on like the synthesizer side of the spectrum um but it seems like you are you guys already have like th what three acoustics an electric a bass a drum back line so yeah it's pr it's pretty cool um and the lap seal is cool too the lap seal is really cool it's it's probably our our most popular item that people are like what is that you know they say they look at the at the that one back there and they're like oh that looks cool but the <laughs> <laughs> they've never seen a lap steel before if it's really something to look at if you've never seen it and um yeah it's at this point it's a walk in and pick your instrument and um and pick it up and, and hop on stage with us and improvise we i mean almost every single night we're there for, um because we're all we're all musicians so we're there, we go on stage, we improvise, and this is just, it really is just like that. Like um, like our regulars now, they go in, they improvise all the time. They come in and they practice, and you can see everybody's progress when it's a community of people that are holding each other up. You see everybody's progress as a musician, and, um, and you really feel it. You really feel it. What's missing now is the electronic aspect because, um, I mean, everything Pioneer is way too expensive, you know? So that eventually will come but that's the component that really is missing yeah yeah all in due time all in due time i, I feel like things are flowing uh really really nicely there so far I, I also when you first told me about it it was it was interesting because you know you mentioned you were thinking about opening this venue and everything and i was like oh it's super cool but then like two weeks later you like had the soft opening and i was yeah. like oh like this is like happening like now <laughs> i guess i didn't <laughs> think that it was like instantly going to be happening right so props to you guys for i'm sure like you said there's a lot of groundwork 10 years of context and, and building but um yeah i thought that was just impressive kind of and, th and then since then how how things have have flown so or, or, or flowed rather um yeah it's really really beautiful concept i mean th th i just want to touch on the point that you that you made about accessibility and and gatekeeping and and how that can cause uh, disparities in in the artist community in terms of like what you know who has access to what right yeah. um, like even like the room that we're sitting in right now right to 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 be a part of WVUM or to to use you like University of Miami resources you have to be a student right which is obviously it's a school so it's I'm, I'm not disparaging that per se but it is it is a gate at the end of the day right so it's important to in my opinion to to build structures that are like accessible to a wider range of people you know so everyone can share their resources share instruments beautiful idea honestly like i've you know i've hosted jams and stuff but but to take it to that scale of like really really um yeah really committing to it is is, is really cool so it's 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 deeply inspiring but yeah you know it, it is interesting how class differences can and do seep into music and art right like you might think that those things are completely separate from it, from those types of movements or anything like that but they're really super connected like but but it's it's nuanced at the same time too right like if you went to like a lot of areas and regions that that don't have as many resources and they they might not have as you know as as many like advanced instruments or et cetera, et cetera, they still have like a really deep connection to the music a lot of the time right so not to say that like it's the only thing that can help you get connected more to music but in this world that we live in right in this culture rather that we live in in the west like it's it's we're, we're in this stage i feel like where uh, more forms of expression through different tools are like more accessible to more people than in the past right like even like 10 years ago 20 years ago like things are so different but there still is work to be done in terms of just making it even more bit available to more people so yeah i just wanted to highlight that point as related to the the sound library concept because i think it's really 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 um valuable and and can really like shift the narrative of of how things work in the city um yeah in tandem with like other other community organizations but yeah you have a point i do um and what i've learned what i've learned um not to touch on that is when when we're young um and we're just learning our instruments over time um we so we haven't had the experience of looking at it from the other side and having put it 
put your instrument down for 20 years. And what we've had is people that haven't played their instruments in 20 years come back and start playing their instruments and relearn them and, you know, fall back in love with the process of music when life really took over. And um, it's, it's, I didn't think about that before. That's something that I really learned there. You know, we have a, f a f very close friend of ours that is a, a successful attorney and has been a successful attorney for like 25 years and um, comes into the venue now every single night, brings one of his guitars from way back in the day because he wants to play his own, connects to one of our amps and just jams with us every single night. And that's something that, that I really didn't even think of, the, the opposite side, you know, falling back in love with it. It's really, it's really special to watch. Yeah. The capacity to hold communal spaces where people can share music is important. It's healing and it's necessary for communities to create these spaces. So it's wonderful that I, the Sound Library is creating that for the community because it promotes growth, promotes camaraderie, promotes the lessening of gatekeeping, and we have accessibility. These are really, really great things. And it's good to see this grow, especially here in Miami. Um, wonderful concept. So we're bringing this to a kind of a forefront um, with a showcase. Sound Library is going to be creating a showcase um, December 9th. I want to talk a little bit more about that. Of course, we are performing artists. We also want to, you know, talk about how we're really excited about how we're going to be bringing a new sort of concept to Miami, but also we really want to talk about like what this can offer for the community. Um, so talking about maybe uh, a little bit about the performance, the showcase and what, what it's about, um, what we're going to be doing December 9th. Um, Philip, you want to maybe, cause you're going to be performing and be doing, your duo. Very excited for that. Yeah, I'm super grateful for, for the opportunity. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful how, how it came together. Um, the lineup also connecting to, to Miami Community Radio as well. Um, shout, out, shout out to MCR. Yeah, shout out MCR. Shout MCR. out the community yeah. there. The that, that's another rabbit hole that I do want to get down in this discussion we, in terms of, of, of that, yeah. that connection and everything. But but yeah, specifically with regards to, to the show, um, yeah, it's 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 important to, like you said, create new spaces that have like alternate intentionalities um, and unique intentionalities as opposed to other spaces that allow for more diverse programming. Right, stuff that's like, like I love to go out and rave. I love to dance. I love to go out to like punk shows. I haven't gone as much as I'd I'd like to in general, um, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brian's birthday, so everyone's um, calling him up today. Happy birthday, happy Brian. Birthday, yeah, Brian. it is indeed Brian's Thanks birthday guys. here live on the air, 90.5 <laughs> FM. Also simulcast on mcr.watch. Um, but, but yeah, basically I was just saying like, um, you know, it's just interesting to see different styles of curation come about. Um, and to highlight something you said earlier, Brian, is like letting people express themselves in the way that they want to right which is something that i feel like not a lot of organizers do because they might have a s specific concept or some um some some angle which is that's cool you know what i mean if you want to create a cohesive experience there's value to that right um but j myself personally I'm, I'm i'm intrigued by this idea of like more kind of like free form curation while still having the intentionality and having it not be like random or like arbitrary uh like just throwing stuff together for the hell of it because there's also people that do that right like the organizers that they just kind of like throw together you know like we've all seen these bills of it's like why is this happening you know what i mean like why are these people together like i don't know like just a lack of intentionality in, in certain places but yeah yeah so i'm really excited about that really excited to see what other lineups come out of the space and um yeah so it's um um uh, yeah, there's a, a duo uh, Cheetah Dot Simulator that I that I perform with my friend Simon. Um, we're gonna be um, we're gonna be performing. Um, yeah, should be interesting to to explore 
that, um, and then the Andes connection is going to perform as well. Um, uh, Rude Boy and SDRV coming together for that duo. Another duo is you guys performing, um, uh, Vibraciones and um, and Brian Andrew Medina, and then Mystics will also perform, and then Lengua, uh, the great Charlie, um, will perform as well. So. Yeah, really, really excited to see how, how it comes together. Um, we are also giving a, a, a ticket. We're doing a, a ticket giveaway as well, if you want to maybe touch on, on that, just for the listeners that uh, might want to attend attend the, the event this, this upcoming Saturday on the 9th. Ticket giveaway. We're hosting um, a ticket giveaway with WVUM. So if you tune in, call today or text in. We'll provide that number soon. Oh, uh, 786 309 yeah. uh, It's probably best if you text. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you can just text 786-309-8861 if you want to enter the ticket giveaway for the Sound Library. That's this December, this Saturday, December 9th, um, starting at 9 p.m.? Yep. Starting at 9 p.m. until until 4, 4 a.m. Uh, with uh, with an open decks, open mic type of situation at the end. So if you want to contribute... Uh, uh, you can also uh, come for that purpose, and and you can also just go to the space in general outside of this event, but specifically for this event coming up this Saturday in the throes of of Basel and all the Art Week craziness, we will be um, having the grand opening of the of the space. So yeah, seven eight six three zero nine eight eight six one. Text in to WVM if you wanna if you wanna enter that giveaway. You can do that at any time throughout the next. Um, what, four or so hours of this uh, of this of this program which for those of you who might be wondering after this discussion we're going to open up into some performances from most of the lineup of this Saturday save for um, save for lengua um, so stay str strapped in basically for the whole for the whole program so you can listen to uh, a little sampling um, of what you might hear at the actual event uh, on the 9th um, yeah so Circling back to, you know, the connection of the sound library to, to Miami Community Radio, the, the connection of, you know, to WVUM and, and to these other um, community community organizations um, that we're all kind of involved in, right? Like Victory also running like the Funraver project and, and everything. So, which isn't directly affiliated with the event, um, but you still, it's, it's, it's a testament to like, you know, the fact that we're all working to, to build communities in, in different ways, which that's something that I think is really important is like having different organizers and different kind of little like uh, niches, right? They can focus on like specific kind of like intentionality or, or do something like new and unique. And then all of those entities, they, they might come together to collaborate in some sense, officially or unofficially, you know, but they're not necessarily tethered to each other in like a strict way related to some upper hierarchy you know what I mean which is a lot of how other systems work so to me that kind of like it's um it reduces the chances of like the progression stopping because even if a particular organization yeah. takes a break or something or something falls away something changes some space goes away which is happens all the time right there's like there's kind of other things that are still happening and then maybe you know there's a hiatus and then something comes back etc cetera, etc cetera. like those kind of like those different like you know like a venn diagram basically or something like that like uh different different circles that that that, that overlap in different ways um which you know rep representatives of that that are related to this specific activation are like the sound library and and, and my community radio and, and WVOM, which are all three different organizations with similar but um, distinct uh, intentionalities related to platforming locals, platforming artists, uh, giving like equitable opportunity to different people, removing boundaries. Um, yeah, so it's 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 really inspiring seeing this kind of like web come together in the city. You know, like especially post COVID and everything and, and post a lot of different more, or shall I say like less connected movements that would happen at, at different times, you know, like in, in the city over the past, maybe like five or six years, it's, it's, it's cool to see some more collaboration coming. And I think it has even more potential, like 
there's there's lots of other organizers that that we're all connected to right that are interested in this these kind of ideals of yep. mutual aid right so it's it's really just the beginning honestly um we can see some really really cool um and 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 life-changing things in the next i think few years you know here in miami and uh, extending out to, to south florida as well but yeah yeah i mean it's a, it feels like it feels like everybody in the community is very much a family and i mean like everybody knows each other you know it's like a small town inside of this enormous city and um and it's funny how far some people here have come you know it really is it's impressive it's it's inspiring to see people play things that they never thought would happen and then they put it together and it does you know and completely build their lives out of it and change every single every single part of of who they are um and become a part of it it's so it's so ri- it's so inspiring to see people yeah Truly. Yeah. And, and there's such a there's such a strong power to what you mentioned earlier, too, of like these shared spaces where everyone is kind of, you know, everyone comes physically to the space or even, you know, a lot of movement in like discord kind of spaces as well. But, you know, these kind of like incubation spaces, right, where you can pull up and there's someone else working on something and then it kind of there's something to it. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, shit, like I kind of want to. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, it's like, oh, I want to get moving. You know what I mean? Like, I want to, I want to, um, to make something happen. Not even necessarily in like a negative, c- competitive type of way, which can also come up within within music and art, right? Like a competitive, a competitive um, approach. But not in my opinion, it, it usually doesn't manifest in that in that negative way. But more so, just like, you know, you get pushed by by the people around you. You're like, oh, there's something cool happening. Other people are doing stuff. Maybe you connect with someone. You know, you you collaborate with them in a new sphere, and then you know, et cetera. Like all the all the dots kind of keep connecting um, in that way. Like, which is you know something we talked about a lot with with MCR. Uh, also, something that we talked about a lot with WVUM. Um, just you know, like the s- space that we're sitting in right now, the office, right? Like so much, so much, um, yeah, so much like beauty like beautiful kind of moments have have transpired here and, and connections between different people just by the nature of of having like a safe space basically that you can that you can come to that you know that it's it's judgment free you can express yourself you can you know engage in different like conversations and dialogues with different people like in a kind of informal way you know or maybe sometimes it is formal and you create more structure and you have like meetings etc cetera, etc cetera, like but it has that fluidity um yeah, so that is uh that's something that I think is 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 really important and and just wanted to highlight that. Yeah. I um I also wanted to point out to who is um uh, who has nothing to do tonight. Um you're more than welcome to say Brian sent you from the air. <laughs> <laughs> sent from the sky. <laughs> Messages yeah. from the skies. <laughs> oh. I want to touch a little bit more about the concept of community and building musical community, especially here in Miami. So maybe if there's, um, for me, I feel it's been really incremental creating spaces, maybe even events where people can come and indulge themselves in music and experiences that help them release, mm. right? Because that's really what, what music is. It's really just a um, modality for us to <coughs> excuse us <laughs> from, from the day-to-day um day to day grind day to day stress um super cathartic for a lot of us super therapeutic but building community i feel is um a different concept from that there's there's uh doing it for oneself and then building community right and so through this process of building community for myself building community for other people different types of folks in different types of spaces i've learned it's really really important to decenter oneself and really um, put one mission in the forefront and I feel like missions are really really important so I wanted to ask 
maybe specifically we're talking about the sound library sound library's mission and maybe we can delve a little bit more deeper and ask each one of us what's our personal mission specifically with community building specifically with this project with the sound library volume one december 9th you can grab your tickets on shotgun super excited for this show but yeah i'll um let's uh let's ask brian specifically about the sound library what's your mission with that moving forward um how is it going to grow? What what do you feel is going to come from this? Because it's already a really, really great concept. It's growing. It's going to be something I feel a lot of us believe is very successful. And it's already very, very healing for a lot of folks who come day in, day out. Regulars coming and practicing and getting better with their musical journey. So we love that you've talked about how it's impacted you. It's really, really cool to see a personal impact and a communal impact. How do you think this will impact people in the future? Ask you a bunch of questions there. So, yeah. but, but you got this. Yeah. You, you're so I passionate already about this. So say thank you because it's been very helpful for me as well. Uh, Learned so much about synths already. It's super <laughs> cool. <laughs> synths are my love language. <laughs> 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 That's a great one. Music is a love language for it sure. Is. For sure. It is. Yeah. And the answer to all your questions is I have no clue. No clue. Yep. I have no clue how this will impact people in the future because I feel like this is a flower that's never grown before. Mm. You know, I really, I really have not. I learn so much every single night. And it's for me, it's an all day thing from my own personal music to um, to the sound library, to Vice City, to building out a recording studio, to, I mean, it's like, it's all day. And I'm seeing this throughout this community grow throughout the entire thing. And I learn something new and see people new do completely new things every single day and step into a world where music isn't just being played for sound. It's being played for from the soul you're in you're in in like them in the movie soul like the the that zone and that zone is um is something that exists even within the audience in that space it's like it's captivating it's it's so interesting to see people perform in front of an audience and nobody leave the room like for the whole jams like open jams nobody leaves and if and people stay to listen to the whole thing. People that don't play instruments, you know, because it's also made for that. That's they're fans of music, um, fans of of kava and and uh, and our drinks, and and fans of video games and and, and an actual physical library with very odd books. Um, I think it's for everybody in a way that is is different and at different times of the day. So I actually have no clue how this will affect. Um, What's your hope for the future? future? My hope is that it continues to help people. Um, we're able to open up more spaces like this um, and in different um, places and different communities where, you know, even our distance can be inaccessible to some people. So in places where it's closer to others. Um, and really for us, it's we put it as simple as just m maintaining the vibe and maintaining, you know, when you when you maintain when you set the atmosphere, people walk into an atmosphere and I feel like they walk out in their own way but from that environment so yeah i don't i have no clue how this will affect musicians in the future well, that's yeah. okay we so don't have to have expectations for big projects we just have to rely on our on our self-discipline and our hard work and honestly i feel like you're there's already so much uh, effort going into this and it's impacting a lot of a lot of folks so really intention is what really matters intention being intentional about projects and how we move forward with them um community building how are your principles? How do you move forward with that? What's your perspective? Um, I mean, my pretty much my entire life now is is revolves around seeing a community all day, right. um, and um, I feel like I feel like values have to be in place, and people have to be understanding of each other, and people have to really, really, really. Um, our motto is to respect every single person and respect the artistry involved in every single way um, when they walk into the venue. Artists are themselves. There's too many venues that tell you exactly how to sound, exactly what to do. You're, you know, as a DJ, somebody tells you, oh, go spin a tech house set, right? You don't want to spin a tech house set. If you play techno, right? Or maybe you do, but whatever. That's me. I never want to spin a tech house set. 
<laughs> but um you know if if you have a, a venue telling you what to do you're no longer you are no longer your own unadulterated artist you're now uh, an extension of what that is and um we really just allow um for people to be themselves yeah what about you philip so yeah i'm i'm glad you honed in on this this topic um of you know dissecting dissecting community dissecting sustainability accessibility you know all these kind of terms that we hear um feels like more and more often right but a lot of the times it seems like there isn't like a level of another word you used intentionality um coming from some of those spaces um so it's just ever more important for there to be to be genuine entities that are focused on community for the sake of actual community for the sake of the people right because there's so much beauty to that what you mentioned you know these shared moments where people are playing other like people are listening you're all vibrating on the same frequency there's something really special there this kind of like connective force um that has such a a, a power for for potential change um i i remember myself like the first time that i had that experience listening to to music in a space with everyone where it was like everyone was really really listening like i i had been in spaces where people were listening like that but i hadn't i wasn't like tapped into that until like this experience that i had at like the ground up festival where just everyone listening i don't know it was just there was something very profound to it so i started thinking a lot about how to how to create spaces like that since then um and i think one of the most important things in doing that like you said is to be open to letting the artists express themselves the way that they want to because that's going to make for like uh it, it's going to everything's going to work out better i don't even like to use the word better i was trying to avoid it but i couldn't think of something else because it's like a value judgment but it works out the way that it is supposed to work out right in terms of like how people express themselves um yeah because we're all just like trying to find the balance of like connecting to the music and the source but then also like the ego side of everything right so um yeah so so just going back then to the importance of like uh uh intentionality from community organizing and also the power to or not power but the ability to reflect to me is crucial like as as an organizer like to to constantly be intaking data mm -hmm. based off of what you do and based off of like the reactions that you get and also always check yourself like yeah. and 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 try to circle back to like why 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 are we, why are we actually doing this why am i doing this because sometimes i think you can kind of get lost in the shuffle and, and things start moving in a certain way and and maybe things start getting more exciting etc cetera, etc cetera. and then it's like maybe you start to fall away from what what it, what it used to be or what the original intention was um which again i'm not saying every scenario like that is necessarily negative um there's there's positivity within that but it just depends on what you're trying to accomplish right like um so that's just something i myself try to reflect on constantly of like what am i why am i doing this like and it's a difficult balance you know as you try to find uh, try to make it sustainable while still upholding the the values and philosophies that you have right because mm -hmm. uh all of the projects that we work on are very like community focused, very open, um, you know, providing resources to people, breaking down barriers. Um, and that can be difficult to maintain sometimes. So you have to find ways to, to balance that. Um, but then sometimes I've personally found myself, maybe I feel like I've tipped the scale too much. Right. And then I have to like check myself with certain decisions. Like, well, does it really matter that much? Like, you know, I'm changing, like what it what it means. Um, so it's a balance, you know. It's it's a yeah. really nuanced. It's extremely complex, but it's like ex very worth the thought. I think you like have to you have to be reflect. I mean, everyone, in my opinion, should reflect on like, you know, like how you engage with spaces and 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 how you. Yeah, how thing, especially as an artist, like 
especially in, as an artist and especially as there starts to become more movement maybe in like what you're doing and what you represent yep the um every i'd say at least every week we reflect on everything we're doing um but when we but when we're improving it's always on the product end and um by improving i mean not um not experience for the musician but but on the business side it's always on product end and we keep the other side away from it because our model is you keep 100 percent of the revenue you make you don't um it doesn't matter if you sell 200 tickets right where we are all artists at that venue and so all we ask is nicely that everybody just buys a drink to support us because that is literally our dinner so you know that's just how how it rolls like we don't it's that simple it really is for us it's a it's a really small thing right now but it has it has so many moving components and keeping the profitability away from the actual environment is like it's a weekly thing. It's a weekly thing and a weekly point of, of improvement of trying to find out, okay, how can we separate this a little bit more or how can we move this a little bit more and how can we sustain ourselves in a different way while keeping this? So that's like where the studio comes in, where we'll be able to sustain ourselves um, more from, from that as well, but still having that environment where people, where it's true to people and keeping that's really important, especially if we decide to open other spaces and um making sure that that is that is <laughs> in like simple business terms that's just the the business model the business model is um is the environment nobody i mean look me this is now in my opinion for the air you know i mean i personally would um just not even you know in any point in time walk into a kava lounge right just just me um but I also wouldn't walk into a bar and I also probably wouldn't walk into a restaurant. But the point, the point there is, um, people don't walk in for just a drink. You know, some people walk in for just a drink, but for the most part, people walk in for the environment and, um, and the way we allow people to feel, um, because as you know, it's all about the vibe. Yeah. Just maintaining it. Yeah. Contribute to, to community projects. It's it's so important. I just want to I just want to highlight that point because um, it takes a village. You know what I mean, right? Like there's 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 um, you know, uh, lots of different people come out and and focus on different projects, and many of them require a certain amount of engagement from the community. Um, and it's you know it's a very, it's it's a f a fluid and nuanced thing because there's the provision of resources and having it be accessible in that way right so you don't necessarily want to create a strict paywall or anything like that because that kind of you know it takes away from from the intentionality the artistic and community-based intentionality but in order for those types of spaces to to actually sustain themselves and and uh you know keep growing there does need to be a level of of support and engagement from the community directly right so that's something i check myself a lot on i mean i'm by no means <laughs> uh, a master of this in terms of like being particular and where i you know where i put like my money and and what i'm kind of like supporting because what you spend your money on is what you're supporting right and n there's no ethical consumption so i'm not disparaging people that get things from amazon i get things from amazon too right but just check yourself sometimes like you know um i feel like sometimes you can like pay ten dollars for an event you know what i mean like and if you're not in a position where you can then you know reach out and if it's if it's a genuine organizer then they'll 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 probably make something work for you but if you're in a position where you can contribute it's i think it's important to to do that because it it takes a village um and it's you know it it's a a narrative in and the, the world in general but specifically miami of these kind of like fleeting spaces you know what i mean like something comes about and there's um some really beautiful movement there but then it just it just it doesn't get the the level of support that 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 it needs so yeah i just wanted to highlight that point um um yeah and, and it's again you know it's it's nuanced like um we're all 
struggling, right? We're all trying to, to build this together. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it's difficult to try to create like a new alternative structure, but you still have to kind of like play the game of the structure that we live in. Right. So it's like, there's certain like balances there that you have to kind of strike. Um, but it just comes back to those ideals of, you know, reflection, um, and like a growth orientated mindset, like always trying to remove your yourself and your ego from the situation and think about like what's the best thing for everyone you know what i mean like while still doing what you need to do to support yourself because if you don't support yourself then you can't support anyone else right like that's another thing that i think happens a lot of the times when you're really invested it's like you start to devalue yourself because you're so like you know you put everything into th this this community and everything so that's something myself personally I've had I've had I've had uh, like struggles with so it's it's something I try to like I guess remind myself of as well but yeah yeah really really interesting discussion hopefully we can have like more forums like this you know we're, we're also hoping to have you know more maybe open discussion with with m more members maybe we can set something up uh, you know where we can have like um, uh, community participation in terms of people that come uh, maybe uh, organize some questions beforehand so yeah just uh i guess stay tapped into the socials to see if, if we do something like that in the future because i think it'd be cool to continue this this um this line of of discussion and everything um also just to remind everyone we are simulcasting on wvm 90.5 fm slash wvm.org slash listen as well as mcr.watch miami community radio so if you want to watch um and listen you can go to mcr.watch but if you're you know if you're driving or something and you want to listen to the audio only uh you can you can go to 90.5 if you're you're living in south florida or you can go to wvm.org slash listen also consider contributing to both of those um entities as well um you can you can donate to both of those entities you could also donate to the sound library as well if you don't necessarily uh enjoy kava or or, or, or kratom you could also just um invest directly or, or rather donate directly um just to mention that yep. um yeah so i don't know if you guys have any specific other points to to delve into i know we do have we have some music to get to you know for the rest of the evening but um yeah i, I, I didn't if like the floor is your guys if you have other points to make yeah um and this is i feel like this is the appropriate time to to announce it but we are giving when the recording studio is built out a thirty percent discount to all MCR residents for recording, mixing, and mastering. So that's a. I feel like it's an appropriate. It's a, It is an appropriate time to to announce this. You know. So yeah, if um if you all are interested, just hit us up. We're we'll, <laughs> we're gonna be spending the next few weeks in construction and recording and stuff. So yeah. Beautiful. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, really, really special resource. That's that's another aspect of the project that I'm really excited for. That's you know, uh, not only the the instrument accessibility, but also the recording accessibility, and uh, especially for for live instruments, uh, but also to sound treated space too. You know, everyone likes likes bedroom pop, but sometimes you want that environment where it's like separate. You know what I mean? You have like a time limit, um, and you have to get something out. So, I'm super excited for that. Um, but, uh, yeah, Victor, I don't know if you have any final thoughts. I or think the discussion we just had was wonderful, very much needed. I'm very, very happy um, to uh, be having a space to openly communicate about these uh, really, really special projects that are currently going on and that's going to be uh, moving forward with our musical community here in Miami. Um, thank you, Brian. Thank you, Philip. And, of course, you know, if you all are interested in seeing the Sound Library in action, Live in action, December 9th, this Saturday, we're going to be hosting a showcase, the Sound Library Volume 1. A couple of us already are going to be on it, and a few other performers that will be coming in tonight to do their performances. Live DJ, hybrid sets, you name it, we have it all. We're going to be throwing a good showcase. You can get your tickets down on Shotgun.live or through the Shotgun app. Mm -hmm. And if you want to consider donating to MCR, WVUM, these entities will greatly appreciate it. We're here building something wonderful. Thank you so much for everybody's contributions tonight. Super, super proud of our community. Yeah, thank you all so much. And um, we're located at 2395 Coral Way. 
um, we're open every day from um, 12 till 12 30 p.m but honestly it ends up being three in the morning because we end up jamming forever <laughs> um so <laughs> almost 24 hours um but yeah we're uh once again 2395 corway there is a ticket giveaway that you can go ahead and call the following number um to enter for this show on december 9th which is an amazing showcase filled with some of my biggest inspirations locally and um, and I hope that you, you all can make it out because it's something that's, that's very special. It's been in the works for a while and is, is a very intimate, uh, performance for everyone involved. Um, it really is a community getting together, um, and, uh, and coming together for one night and it, you know, making, making something special out of it. So thank you all so much. Um, Philip, do you have the number by the name? 786-309-8861. That is 786-309-8861. I was waiting for the queue. Um, you're listening to WVUM 90.5 FM, South Florida's alternative voice. This broadcast also simulcast on Miami Community Radio. That's mcr.watch. Um, like Brian just mentioned, we are doing a giveaway for a ticket for uh, this upcoming event on Saturday the 9th at uh, Vice City Cava, the grand opening of the Sound Library, with Miami Community re- residents um, performing uh, a, a, a variety of sets. So, again, 786-309-8861. Text in if you want to enter the giveaway. Uh, the winner is announced via socials uh, tomorrow or midweek. Um, we'll go ahead and announce uh, tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So, the winner will be announced tomorrow. Um, and, yeah, come by to go, go to go to the, uh, you know, consider consider and feel free to, 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 to attend the Vice City, other Vice City Cava events as well, but specifically come to the ninth because that's going to be a mm-hmm. showcase. F- specifically, yeah, feel free to come awesome to the ninth because it'll it'll be a beautiful showcase. So, yeah. <coughs> excuse me, we are going to step away briefly um, as we get set for the uh, musical performance element slash section of the evening. We have Cheetah Dot Simulator, which is a, a duo of myself as well as Simon Silva um, performing next. Um, live from the WVUM office, as well as the other sets, also live from the office, which will then be the Andes Connection, followed by uh, Vibraciones and Brian Andrew Medina, uh, beautiful humans to my both to my left. Uh, they will be performing as well. And then finally, Mystics um, will close out the evening. So keep it locked, 90.5 FM, mcr.watch. Like I said, we'll step away briefly, so um, get a tea or something, and then check mm-hmm. back with with us in 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 15 minutes yeah. and for everybody that's on the drive have a safe drive have a good night and uh and take it easy thanks everyone much love